The Miracle of Naaman, Unlocking the Power of Faith and Obedience in ancient times, in a distant land, there lived a man whose name has echoed through the centuries, Naaman, the Syrian commander. Her story is a journey of faith, courage and redemption that has inspired and edified generations over the centuries. Naaman faced the devastating challenge of leprosy, a disease that led him to desperately search for a cure. It was then that he heard of a prophet in Israel whose divine power was known to perform miracles. Determined to find healing, Naaman set out on a spiritual journey that would change him forever. Her story reminds us of the importance of faith, obedience, and trust in the Lord's power, lessons that continue to resonate in our hearts to this day. So without further ado, let's go to history. Naaman, the great commander of the Syrian army, was known throughout the Middle East for his military prowess and his ability to lead troops to victory. From a young age, he had been trained in the arts of war and quickly rose through the ranks of the army, earning the respect and admiration of his soldiers and the king of Syria. Born into a family of nobles, Naaman was raised in an environment of privilege and prestige. From an early age, he showed talent and determination, excelling in military training and strategy. His father, a renowned general, saw in him extraordinary potential and invested heavily in his training. Naaman grew up in the midst of battles and conquests, witnessing the brutality of war and the glory of victory. He learned early on that strength and courage were the most valued virtues in his world, and he strived to exceed all expectations. When the king of Syria appointed him commander-in-chief of the army, Naaman felt a mixture of pride and responsibility. He was determined to defend the interests of his king and his nation, whatever the cost. His reputation as an invincible warrior grew, and he became a legendary figure among his countrymen and his enemies. However, behind the facade of power and glory, Naaman carried a secret burden. He suffered from leprosy, an incurable disease that corroded his skin and sapped his strength. Though he could hide his condition from the eyes of the world, the knowledge of his own mortality haunted his thoughts day and night. Despite his many victories in battle, Naaman knew that he could not defeat leprosy with his military skills. He desperately sought a cure for his illness, but all attempts at treatment had failed. He felt like a giant with feet of clay, fragile and vulnerable inside, despite his apparent invincibility. While leading his army in yet another campaign of conquest, Naaman found himself confronted with an unlikely opportunity for healing. A young Israelite captive, captured during an earlier raid, shared with her wife about a prophet in Israel who could heal Naaman's leprosy. These words sparked a flame of hope in his heart, a possibility of redemption he had never dared to imagine. Leprosy, a terrible and incurable disease at that time, was a constant source of pain and anguish for Naaman. From the moment he discovered the first signs of the disease on his skin, he knew his life was irrevocably changed. The leprosy not only corroded his body but also his soul, filling him with fear and despair. Naaman tried to hide his condition from the eyes of the world, fearing the stigma and shame it would bring if discovered. He carefully covered the blemishes of his skin with loose clothing and thick makeup, doing his best to maintain the appearance of health and vigor. Yet, no matter how hard he tried to deny reality, leprosy continued to spread, insidious and relentless. Each day was a battle against physical pain and emotional anguish. The leprosy affected not only his body but also his mind, filling him with gloomy thoughts and hopelessness. He wondered if he would ever find relief from his suffering, or if he was doomed to live a life of pain and isolation. Despite his condition, Naaman continued to lead his army with bravery and determination. He refused to let leprosy define him, desperately seeking a cure that would restore his health and dignity. He was willing to do anything to rid himself of the burden of his illness, even if it meant risking his life in search of an uncertain hope. While the world saw him as an invincible warrior, Naaman knew that inside he was fighting a much tougher battle. He prayed to the gods for mercy and relief, begging for a cure that always seemed to be out of his reach. He felt like a prisoner in his own body, unable to escape the inevitable fate that awaited him. In the silence of his tent at night, Naaman confronted his deepest fears and doubts. He wondered if he would ever find peace and happiness again, 
or if he was doomed to live a life of suffering and loneliness. Despite his many achievements and successes, he felt more vulnerable than ever, unable to find a cure for the disease that haunted him day and night. During one of his military campaigns, Naaman captured a young Israelite girl as a slave. She was an inconspicuous presence among the captives, but there was something about her serene expression and gentle eyes that caught Naaman's attention. As he watched her take care of household chores, he noticed an aura of peace and serenity around her, a calm that he himself had long since lost. The young captive, though subjugated and deprived of her freedom, exuded an aura of faith and hope that intrigued Naaman. She didn't seem bitter or resentful about her situation, but rather resigned and confident that everything was unfolding according to God's plan. Her serenity and confidence piqued Naaman's curiosity, prompting him to seek her company whenever possible. One quiet evening, Naaman sat down next to the young captive and began to talk to her. He asked about his homeland, about his family, and about his faith. To his surprise, the young captive did not express bitterness or resentment for her condition, but rather a deep faith in the God of Israel. It was during this conversation that the young captive shared with Naaman about the prophet in Israel who could heal her leprosy. She spoke of the miracles performed by this prophet and his faith in the power of the living God. His words resonated in Naaman's heart, awakening a long dormant hope within him. Upon hearing about the possibility of healing, Naaman felt mixed emotions. On the one hand, he was hopeful that he could finally find relief from his suffering. On the other hand, he was skeptical that a simple prophet could perform such an extraordinary miracle. However, the seed of hope had been planted in his heart, and he could not ignore the possibility of a cure. As he pondered his words, Naaman realized that there was something different about the young captive's faith. She did not speak with fear or uncertainty, but rather with an unshakable trust in the power of the God of Israel. Her faith was a living testimony that nothing was impossible with the Lord, and Naaman was inspired by her conviction and determination. As the night wore on, Naaman continued to converse with the young captive, taking in every word she said. He felt an inexplicable connection to her, as if her presence brought a peace and hope he had long since lost. He knew he had to find out more about this prophet in Israel and the possibility of healing he offered. As he said goodbye to the young captive that night, Naaman felt renewed in his determination to seek a cure for his leprosy. He didn't know what awaited him in Israel, but he was willing to risk everything in pursuit of a hope that had long since been lost. With his mind full of thoughts and his heart full of hope, he began to make plans for a journey that would change his life forever. The young captive's words echoed in Naaman's mind as he prepared for his journey to Israel. The possibility of healing had awakened a flame of hope within him, a bright light that had been dark for so long. He felt a mix of emotions as he prepared to leave his homeland and venture into uncharted territory. As he said goodbye to his wife and children, Naaman felt a sense of determination growing within him. He knew that this journey would not be easy and that he would face many challenges along the way. However, the promise of healing was stronger than any fear or uncertainty he might feel. He was willing to risk everything in pursuit of a hope that had been denied for so long. As he set out on his journey, Naaman took with him an entourage of soldiers and servants, as well as a letter from the king of Syria to the king of Israel. The letter requested the intervention of the king of Israel in curing Naaman's leprosy and asked for an audience with the prophet in Israel who could perform the miracle. As Naaman traveled through the barren and mountainous lands toward Israel, he spent his time reflecting on his life and what awaited him in the neighboring country. He wondered if the prophet in Israel would be able to perform the miracle he so desired, or if it was all just an illusion. Yet, despite his doubts and fears, he kept moving forward, driven by the hope of a cure that would change his life forever. Upon arriving at the border of Israel, Naaman felt a sense of anticipation and anxiety. He knew that his journey was just beginning and that the real test was yet to come. However, he was determined to face any challenge that came his way, knowing that the reward would be worth the effort and sacrifice. As he prepared to cross the border, Naaman felt a sense of growing anticipation in his heart. He didn't know what awaited him in Israel, 
but he was willing to face any challenge in search of the healing he so desired. With his mind full of thoughts and his heart full of hope, he took the first step into the unknown, knowing that his life would never be the same. As Naaman approached the lands of Israel, he felt more and more anxious about what awaited him. He knew that his arrival would not go unnoticed and that he would arouse the attention of both the king of Israel and the people. However, he was determined to face any challenge in search of the healing he so desired, even if it meant facing the distrust and hostility of the Israelites. Upon arriving at the Israeli border, Naaman was greeted by a patrol of Israeli soldiers, who watched him with suspicion and suspicion. They inquired about his identity and the purpose of his visit, while keeping their spears ready for combat. However, Naaman reassured them by showing them the letter from the king of Syria to the king of Israel and explaining to them the reason for their journey. The Israelite soldiers read the letter cautiously, their gazes becoming more and more perplexed as they absorbed its contents. The letter requested the intervention of the king of Israel in curing Naaman's leprosy and asked for an audience with the prophet in Israel who could perform the miracle. As the soldiers argued among themselves about what to do, Naaman waited expectantly, eager to continue his search for healing. After a brief consultation, the soldiers agreed to escort Naaman to the palace of the king of Israel, where they delivered the letter to the monarch. The king of Israel, when he read the letter, was overcome with panic and worry. He feared that the request of the king of Syria was a pretext to provoke a war or a trap to challenge his authority. The king of Israel tore his garments in anguish and despair, fearing the consequences of a possible refusal or failure to comply with the request of the king of Syria. He gathered his closest advisors to discuss the matter and seek a solution that could satisfy Naaman's demands without triggering a political or military crisis. Meanwhile, Naaman waited anxiously in the palace, watching the comings and goings of the king's soldiers and emissaries. He knew that his search for healing was in the hands of the king of Israel and the prophet in Israel, and he prayed that they would be able to perform the miracle he so desired. His mind was full of thoughts and his soul full of hope as he awaited the unfolding of events. After much deliberation and debate, the king of Israel made a decision. He decided to send a message to the prophet in Israel, the renowned Elisha, requesting his intervention in curing Naaman's leprosy. He hoped that the prophet could perform the miracle and satisfy the demands of the king of Syria without triggering a diplomatic or military crisis. News of the king of Israel's decision quickly spread through the palace, and Naaman felt a mixture of relief and hope upon hearing that his search for healing would continue. He was determined to do whatever was necessary to rid himself of the burden of his leprosy, even if it meant facing even greater challenges in his path. With his mind full of thoughts and his heart full of hope, he awaited the next chapter of his journey with anticipation and determination. Upon receiving the message from the king of Israel requesting his intervention in the healing of Naaman's leprosy, the prophet Elisha was deeply touched. He knew that Naaman's life was in God's hands and that he had the power to perform the miracle they so desired. With faith and trust, Elisha agreed to meet with Naaman and offer him the hope of healing. Meanwhile, the king of Israel was preparing to welcome Naaman into his palace, seeking to ensure that he was treated with the dignity and respect his position deserved. He ordered his servants to prepare a suitable reception for the Syrian commander, in the hope that this would help calm any tension or mistrust between them. When Naaman arrived at the palace of the king of Israel, he was received with great pomp and ceremony. The king greeted him warmly and expressed his gratitude for his visit, while the palace servants hurried to offer him food and drink. Naaman was impressed by the hospitality of the king of Israel and felt grateful for his willingness to assist him in his quest for healing. While enjoying the hospitality of the palace, Naaman looked forward to the arrival of the prophet Elisha. He knew that his journey for healing was about to reach a turning point, and he prayed that the prophet would be able to perform the miracle he so desired. His mind was full of thoughts and his soul full of hope as he awaited the unfolding of events. Finally, the prophet Elisha arrived at the palace, surrounded by an aura of serenity and divine power. He greeted Naaman with humility and respect, conveying to him a sense of peace and confidence. Naaman immediately felt at ease in the prophet's presence, 
knowing that he was standing before a man of God who had the power to perform the miracle he so desired. With a mixture of anticipation and anxiety, Naaman explained to the prophet Elisha about his leprosy condition and his search for healing. He shared his hope that the prophet would be able to perform the miracle and offer him the redemption he so desperately sought. Elisha listened intently to Naaman's words, his calm and serene expression conveying a sense of confidence and assurance. After hearing Naaman's story, Elisha smiled kindly and told him not to be afraid. He assured her that the Lord had heard her prayers and was ready to perform the miracle of healing. However, he told Naaman that healing would come in an unexpected way and that he would need to rely on the Lord's guidance to achieve it. Naaman was intrigued by the words of the prophet Elisha. He expected the miracle of healing to come in a grand and spectacular way, but what Elisha was suggesting was something else entirely. However, he was willing to rely on the prophet's guidance and follow his instructions if it meant finding relief from his suffering. With a mixture of curiosity and determination, Naaman waited anxiously to hear what the prophet had to say. He was ready for any challenge or sacrifice that might be necessary to achieve the healing he so desperately sought. He knew he was facing a pivotal moment in his journey, and he was determined to keep going no matter what. Elisha looked at Naaman with compassion and wisdom, understanding the internal struggle he faced. He knew that Naaman needed more than just physical healing, he needed an inner transformation, a renewal of his faith and trust in the power of the living God. With this in mind, Elisha chose his words carefully, knowing that each of them was crucial to the success of the mission. Naaman, Elisha said, his voice calm and steady, the healing you seek will not come in the way you expect. It won't be through elaborate rituals or spectacular displays of power. Instead, it will come through simple obedience and unwavering faith in the Lord's power. Naaman listened intently to the prophet's words, absorbing each one with reverence and humility. He knew that Elisha was speaking the truth and that he needed to rely on the Lord's guidance, even if it meant doing something that seemed simple or insignificant. What shall I do, then, asked Naaman, his voice full of expectation. Elisha smiled kindly and said to him, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan River, and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. Naaman was surprised at the apparent simplicity of Elisha's instruction. He expected something grander and more elaborate, something that required a public display of power or devotion. However, he knew that the Lord had a purpose for every word of the prophet, and he was willing to obey no matter what. With a sense of renewed determination, Naaman prepared to follow the prophet's instructions. He knew that the Jordan River was a short distance away and that it wouldn't be long before he got there. With a heart full of hope and faith, he set out for the river, ready to accomplish what was asked of him. As Naaman walked toward the Jordan River, he felt mixed emotions. He was excited about the possibility of a cure, but he was also nervous about what awaited him. He knew that his journey was just beginning and that he would still face many challenges along the way. However, he was determined to move forward, trusting in the Lord's guidance and the promise of healing he had made. As he approached the Jordan River, Naaman felt a tumultuous mix of emotions within him. He was excited about the possibility of healing, but he was also struggling with a sense of frustration and disbelief. The idea of bathing in the river seven times seemed so simple and insignificant, and he struggled to understand how it could bring about the healing he so desired. As he neared the banks of the Jordan River, Naaman saw the rushing waters in front of him, reflecting the glow of the afternoon sun. He wondered if Elisha was right, if healing would really come through this simple act of obedience. However, a part of him resisted the idea, wanting something grander and more spectacular to validate his faith. That's crazy, Naaman thought to himself. How can a simple bath in the river cure such a terrible disease as leprosy? It doesn't make sense. Yet, despite his doubts and hesitations, a voice within Naaman urged him to move forward. It was the voice of hope, the voice of faith, reminding him that the Lord had the power to accomplish the impossible. With a resigned sigh, Naaman decided to go ahead and obey the prophet's instructions, even if it meant facing his own unbelief. As Naaman stripped naked and prepared to enter the waters of the Jordan River, he felt a sense of humiliation and vulnerability. 
He was a powerful and respected commander, accustomed to giving orders and being obeyed. However, in front of the river, he felt small and insignificant, as if he were surrendering to the will of something greater than himself. With a sense of renewed determination, Naaman plunged into the waters of the Jordan River, feeling the cold, invigorating current around him. He bathed once, then twice, but felt no change in his condition. Her skin was still blotchy and rough, and her leprosy was still present. Frustration began to build up inside Naaman as he repeatedly bathed in the river, seeing no sign of healing. He wondered if he had done something wrong, if he had disobeyed the prophet's instructions in any way. However, a voice within him reminded him to remain faithful and persevere in hope, even when things seemed bleak. With a heavy sigh, Naaman plunged into the waters of the river once more, feeling a mixture of emotions within him. He knew that healing was near, but he also knew that he would have to continue to fight for faith and obedience to the end. With a heart full of hope and determination, he prepared to perform the last bath, trusting in the Lord's power to perform the miracle he so desired. As Naaman continued his journey of obedience on the Jordan River, he felt a tumultuous mix of emotions within him. Every dip in the icy waters of the river was a tangible reminder of their vulnerability and dependence on divine power. He struggled with his own unbelief and impatience as leprosy continued to eat away at his skin, challenging his newfound faith. However, as Naaman repeatedly plunged into the waters of the Jordan, something began to change within him. Each dive represented an act of submission and trust in the Lord's power. He found himself putting aside his doubts and expectations, embracing the simple truth that the miracle was beyond his human comprehension. As he emerged from the waters for the seventh time, Naaman felt a sense of peace and renewal flood his being. He looked down at his hands and saw the leprosy disappear before his eyes, replaced by the clean, healthy skin he hadn't seen in so long. A smile of gratitude and admiration spread across his face as he witnessed the Lord's transforming power in his own life. With his heart overflowing with joy and gratitude, Naaman came out of the waters of the Jordan, healed and cleansed of his leprosy. He knelt before Elisha, thanking the prophet and the God of Israel for performing the miracle he so desired. His faith had been tried and tested, and he emerged stronger and more confident than ever in his divine power. As he prepared to return to his homeland, Naaman knew that his life would never be the same. He had experienced firsthand the transforming power of the Lord and was determined to live the rest of his days in gratitude and service to him. His journey to the Jordan had been a testament to his faith and his determination to seek the healing he so desired, and he was eternally grateful that he had been found worthy to receive the miracle of restoration. With a heart full of hope and a new perspective on life, Naaman set out from the Jordan, ready to face the future with courage and faith. He knew that he would face many challenges along the way, but he also knew that the Lord would always be by his side, guiding and protecting him every step of the way. His journey of healing had come to an end, but his journey of faith and service had only just begun, and he was determined to live each day in gratitude and praise to the God who had healed him. Chapter 10, The Triumphant Return As Naaman made his triumphant return to his homeland, he was greeted with celebration and acclamation by his fellow citizens. His miraculous healing was a cause of great rejoicing and admiration, and he was revered as a hero and an example of faith and courage. News of his meeting with the prophet in Israel and the miracle of the Jordan spread quickly throughout the region, inspiring those who heard of him to seek their own faith and hope in the Lord's power. As he gathered with his family and friends, Naaman shared his incredible journey of healing and redemption. He told how he had been guided by divine power to the waters of the Jordan, where his leprosy had been miraculously healed. Her story was living proof of the Lord's power to transform lives and restore health and happiness to those who trusted in Him. While he was celebrated as a hero in his homeland, Naaman knew that it was not to him that the glory belonged, but rather to the God of Israel who had performed the miracle in his life. He dedicated himself to living out the rest of his days in service and worship to the Lord, sharing his story and his faith with all those who crossed his path. Yet, even with all the admiration and praise he received, Naaman never forgot the lesson he learned in the waters of the Jordan. 
He knew that true healing did not come from water itself, but rather from faith and obedience to divine power. His journey to the Jordan had been a testament to his faith and his determination to seek the healing he so desired, and he was eternally grateful that he had been found worthy to receive the miracle of restoration. As he gazed at the horizon, contemplating the future that awaited him, Naaman knew that his journey was far from over. He would face many challenges and trials along the way, but he would do so with courage and faith, knowing that the Lord was always by his side. His journey of healing and redemption had changed him forever, and he was determined to live out the rest of his days in gratitude and service to the God who had healed him. As the years passed, Naaman's legacy grew and spread throughout the region. Her story of healing and redemption inspired future generations to seek their own faith and hope in the Lord's power. He was remembered as a hero and an example of courage and determination, whose unwavering faith had been rewarded with the miracle of healing. Naaman's story was recorded in sacred writings and passed down from generation to generation, making it a lasting testimony to the Lord's power to transform lives. His name was pronounced with reverence and respect by all those who heard of him, reminding them of the miracle the Lord had performed in his life. However, Naaman's true legacy lay not in his physical healing, but rather in his spiritual transformation. He had learned to trust in the Lord's power in all things, even when circumstances seemed bleak and hopeless. Her faith and obedience were a living example of the power of trust in the Lord, and her story continued to inspire and encourage those who listened. Over the years, Naaman dedicated himself to serving the Lord and sharing his story of healing and redemption with all who crossed his path. He traveled throughout the land, testifying of the Lord's power and spreading the message of hope and salvation to all those who were willing to listen. His journey took him to distant and unknown places, where he met people from all nations and languages. He shared his story with kings and queens, nobles and commoners, rich and poor, showing everyone that the Lord's power knew no bounds or boundaries. As he grew older, Naaman continued to serve the Lord with all his heart and soul, dedicating himself to spreading the message of faith and hope to the end of his days. He never forgot the miracle the Lord had performed in his life, and he was determined to live each day in gratitude and praise to the God who had healed him. When the time finally came for Naaman to leave this world, he departed in peace, knowing that he had fulfilled the mission the Lord had entrusted to him. His faith and obedience were rewarded with eternal life at the Lord's side, where he found rest and peace for all eternity. Naaman's legacy lived on beyond his own lifetime, continuing to inspire and encourage those who followed him. Her story has been told and retold throughout the generations, reminding everyone of the Lord's power to transform lives and perform miracles beyond human comprehension. And so, the story of Naaman, the Syrian commander who was healed of leprosy through his faith and obedience to the Lord, became an enduring testimony to the power of divine love. Her journey of healing and redemption continues to touch the hearts and minds of all those who seek true hope and salvation in the Lord. Naaman's legacy echoed through the centuries, leaving an indelible mark on the history of God's people. Her journey of faith and healing served as a beacon of hope for those facing challenges and adversity, reminding them that the Lord was always there for those who sought Him wholeheartedly. His story has been preserved in the sacred pages of Scripture, where he has continued to inspire and edify believers throughout the centuries. Each generation found new meaning and inspiration in Naaman's story, seeing it as a reflection of their own journey of faith and trust in the Lord. In addition to the scriptures, Naaman's name was revered in songs and hymns, in sermons and sermons, as a living example of the Lord's transforming power. His story was told in churches and synagogues around the world, reminding the faithful that the Lord's power knew no bounds. But Naaman's legacy was not limited to religious circles alone. His story has inspired artists and writers, poets and musicians, who have found in him an inexhaustible source of inspiration and creativity. Her journey of healing and redemption has been depicted in paintings and sculptures, in plays and operas, as an ode to human faith and perseverance. Additionally, Naaman's name was remembered in charitable works and social works, where his story served as a powerful reminder of the importance of compassion and mercy towards those in need. 
Her journey of healing and redemption inspired countless people to stand up in service to others, sharing the Lord's love with those who needed it most. Even after his death, Naaman's name continued to resonate through the ages as an eternal witness to the Lord's power and grace. His story was told and retold, reminding everyone that the Lord was always there for those who sought him with all their hearts. And so, Naaman's legacy lived on beyond his own lifetime, continuing to inspire and edify the hearts of those who heard his story. Their journey of faith and healing stood as a beacon of hope for all those facing challenges and adversity, reminding them that the Lord was always by their side, ready to guide and protect them every step of the way. Naaman's legacy transcended the borders of his own people and reached distant lands, influencing and inspiring people from different cultures and traditions. Its history has been carried by travelers and traders, missionaries and explorers, spreading beyond geographical and linguistic borders. In distant lands where Naaman's name was unknown, his story was received with awe and reverence, as a powerful testimony to the power and goodness of the living God. People listened with amazement and wonder about the miracle the Lord had performed in Naaman's life, and many found hope and comfort in his story of healing and redemption. Missionaries took Naaman's story to the farthest corners of the world, sharing it with those who had never heard of the God of Israel. They used their story as a tool to reach the hearts and minds of those who were lost in spiritual darkness, showing them the way to light and salvation in Christ. In many foreign lands, temples were erected in honor of Naaman, where people came to worship and offer sacrifices to the God who had performed the miracle in their lifetime. Their story was told and retold in hymns and songs, in dances and plays, as an expression of gratitude and praise to the Lord. In addition, Naaman's name was remembered in religious ceremonies and festivals, where people gathered to celebrate his life and legacy. His story was told in sermons and speeches, in sacred books and writings, as a living example of the Lord's power to transform lives and perform miracles beyond human comprehension. Even after centuries, Naaman's name continued to be revered in many foreign lands, as a symbol of faith and hope for all those who sought the power of the living God. His story stood as a beacon of light in the midst of the darkness of the world, reminding everyone that the Lord was always there for those who sought Him with all their hearts. And so, Naaman's impact extended far beyond the borders of his own land, reaching distant lands and influencing people from different cultures and traditions. Her story of faith and healing has remained a powerful testament to the power and goodness of the living God, inspiring and uplifting the hearts of those who heard her in every corner of the world. Naaman's story was not only about physical healing but also about the power of obedience and unwavering faith in the Lord. His challenge to dive seven times into the Jordan River represented more than just an act of purification, it was a test of their willingness to trust in God's plan, even when it seemed irrational to human eyes. Naaman faced a dilemma common to many of us, the battle between reason and faith. When Elisha gave him simple instructions, Naaman was initially disappointed. He expected an elaborate ritual or a more impressive display of power. However, he soon realized that true faith required obedience, even when we didn't fully understand God's ways. That lesson remains relevant to this day. Often, we are faced with situations where our instincts tell us one thing, but our faith leads us in another direction. It is at these times that we are challenged to trust in the Lord and obey His will, even when it seems counterintuitive or difficult to understand. Naaman reminds us that obedience is not always easy, but it is essential for us to experience God's power and providence in our lives. He chose to follow Elisha's instructions, even when it didn't make sense to him, and was rewarded with the miraculous healing he so desired. Therefore, as we face our own challenges of faith and obedience, we can look to Naaman's story as a reminder that the Lord is faithful to keep his promises and that he always rewards those who trust in him with all their hearts. The story of Naaman, the Syrian commander, is a journey of faith, courage, and redemption that echoes through the centuries. His desperate search for a cure for leprosy led him on a spiritual journey that profoundly transformed him, teaching him valuable lessons about faith, obedience, and trust in the Lord's power. Naaman reminds us that no matter how desperate our situation may be, we can always find hope and healing in the Lord. 
Her story is a powerful testimony to God's love and grace, which are always available to those who seek Him with all their hearts. Additionally, the story of Naaman challenges us to examine our own hearts and consider whether we are willing to obey the Lord's will, even when doing so seems irrational to human eyes. Their journey of faith and obedience inspires us to trust in God's plan for our lives and to move forward with courage and determination, knowing that He is always by our side, guiding and protecting us every step of the way. May Naaman's story continue to inspire and encourage us, reminding us of the Lord's transformative power and the importance of faith and obedience in our lives. May we follow His example, trusting in the Lord in all circumstances and seeking His will in all that we do. May we find hope and healing in His eternal love, just as Naaman did, and may we live each day in gratitude and praise to the God who heals and renews us. And so, Naaman's journey teaches us valuable lessons in faith, courage, and obedience. If you were inspired by this story and want to continue receiving more inspiring content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with your friends and family. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any updates. Together, we can continue to grow in our faith and seek the Lord's presence in our lives. Thanks for watching and see you next time.